Hey there, my friends. In today's video, we're gonna check out one of the easiest ways to really make your scale model tanks pop. In just a few minutes, this easy technique for replicating cast steel textures can help turn your models from looking like a little piece of plastic to looking like a big hunk of rolling heavy metal. During World War II, components for a lot of US and Soviet tanks in particular were manufactured using a process called casting, where molten liquid steel would be poured into a mold to create a single strong piece of armor rather than joining several pieces of flat steel together with welds or bolts. Examples of this kind of cast steel armor can be found on the turrets and transmission covers of American Sherman tanks, as well as the turrets of Soviet tanks like T-34s and IS-2s. The easiest way to identify this kind of cast steel armor is to look for big, rounded, or curved pieces of armor with a rough, bumpy texture, rather than large, flat pieces of steel joined at sharp angles. So today we're gonna to learn how to replicate this cast steel look and add another great scale modeling skill to your toolbox. If that sounds good to you, let's hop right into it. All right, so for today's demonstration, we're gonna hop between a few different kits at various stages of completion. We'll start with this M4A1 Sherman, which was a variant of the iconic American medium tank that was built around a large cast steel hull. So this is a perfect piece for adding some cast texture. As you can see, the Tamiya mold already comes with some nice subtle cast texture, but at 135 scale, I like to exaggerate this a little bit more. Since folks will be looking at your model from more than a few inches away, I think it's a good artistic choice to over accentuate some of these features to help achieve the feel of metal at this scale. The main product we'll be using today is this acrylic anti-slip paste from Ammo. This product was originally designed to replicate the anti-slip texture you usually see on the horizontal surfaces of a lot of modern tanks, but it's also great for creating this cast texture. So all we need to do to get started here is load up a little bit of paste on an old stiff bristled brush. Don't use your nice painting brushes because you're gonna really screw up the bristles here. And we're gonna use a technique called stippling to apply a nice even bumpy coat all over the surface of our armor. This product dries relatively slowly so you can keep working with it until you're happy with the results. And all we're gonna do is keep our brush at a 90 degree angle from the surface of the model and just gently poke the product on sort of like a stamp. You'll see this creates a little wavy, prickly effect that once we paint and weather up, will look just like cast steel. When you need to tackle some of the tighter spaces of your tank, it can be helpful to switch down to a smaller brush. And if you ever get some of this product on a part of the model that shouldn't be cast steel, you can always brush it off with a little bit of wet paper towel, no worries. A good rule of thumb is to work in small sections. Apply just a little bit of the anti-slip paste and work within the section until you achieve a good, even application of the product. With our hull complete, we can hop up to our turret and do the same thing. It's a really good idea to have some reference images close at hand to make sure you're only treating the parts of the tank that would be cast steel. And once we're happy with our overall texture effect, all we've got to do is let the product dry completely and then we're going to move on to painting. There aren't any special considerations to take into account when you're painting a tank with this special cast texture. We're just going to go ahead and airbrush or hand paint up our tank just like we usually would. I like to use a base coat of black primer before I move on to my olive drab on my American tanks like this one, and you can see that here on this M18 Hellcat. The Hellcat doesn't have any cast textures, but I'm just using some footage here to demonstrate the painting phase. Once you finish painting your whole tank, including all the stowage, and you're ready to move on to weathering, you can spray the whole vehicle with a coat of gloss varnish to protect your work. Okay, back to our cast texture. So here we're looking at the turret of an M26 Pershing with the cast texture applied, painted, and hit with a varnish coat. You can see this already looks so much more dynamic and like heavy steel than just the untreated plastic, and we're just gonna take one final step to really accentuate this technique. We're gonna take a little bit of enamel dark wash and brush this all over our cast texture. And once the whole surface is coated, we can follow that up with some enamel thinner to help the wash flow smoothly all over our model. This is going to help the wash flow into just the recessed parts of our new cast texture and it's going to clean off all those little raised bumps. This is going to create some really cool artificial shadows and grime and really make this technique pop. Once you're happy with the effect, you can let it dry completely and finish up your model as you usually would. And as you can see with the turret of this Sherman Jumbo here, you're left with a beautiful rough cast texture. As I mentioned earlier, this is a little more exaggerated than you'd see on a real American World War II tank. But at this scale, ramping up that effect a bit really helps your model stand out when it's sitting in your display case, or on your office desk, or at a scale modeling competition. So my friends, give this technique a try and let me know what you think. You can check out some of my other scale modeling tips and tricks right here. And if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing right here to Spurs and Brews Scale Modeling. Until next time, my friends, be well, happy building, cheers.